It's that time again. What's up, everybody? This is Dad's Land and Fab. Hope you enjoy the show. Deuces. Boom. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to another weekly show of Dad's Lads and Kebabs. Mickey boy, how are you doing? Hello. Wait there a minute. Oh, here we go. <sighs> Fucking dogs. What am, I, what, what am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> really badly. <laughs> I've no idea, mate. Well, I'm looking back. <sighs> looking back in anger. <laughs> You're looking yes. back in anger. Oh, Oasis, mate. O- Oasis are back. I grew up listening to Oasis. All the albums, I've probably still got them somewhere. All the CDs. I've yeah. got very happy. Four albums, I think. I might yeah. still have four. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Oasis uh, for me were like a. They were like a nostalgic moment. They were a proper. You know, for me growing up, it was. You know, I'm not going to say I'm a diehard. I love Oasis, nothing else. Music is not music if it's not Oasis. I mean, I love music, <laughs> no. but Oasis for me were just, they were like an era for me that, you know, family listened to Oasis. So especially a lot of Northern bands, you know. Yeah. They were just around that time. And then Oasis come along and they were just angry, fucking did what they want. Great part. You know, they had a culture behind them, you know, the scene behind Oasis. People can love it or hate it, but I fucking loved it. You you could be an Oasis because you got a Stone Island jumper. Liam's got the jacket. Mate, you get the the bucket hat, the sunglasses, and just stand there like this. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I've got. I've probably got about four pairs of Adidas Speezels. I've got I've got Sergio jackets, Stone Island jackets. But it's not just about that. Like people, there's such an image no, no. connected to it, and I don't think that's just it. But the moment that they were announced coming up, like I'm, I'm in a pre-sale thing at the moment. I'm in a. I've got like a hundred tabs opened. Good on luck. Lap, laptop and phone, mate. If I can get tickets, I will get tickets. Yeah. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not. And the thing is, I'm not gonna be like. I'll be so pissed off if I didn't. I mean, I would be pissed off. But do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not paying through the nose for them. I'm not fucking doing it. They're going to go for thousands on eBay or these ticket sellers. If you're it's a ticket seller, crazy money. if you're a reseller, a bot seller, a tout, you're a cunt. Mm. You're an absolute... Honestly, if you are a reseller of tickets, you're a fucking arsehole. Because they're, they're the ones that, that stay in the queue. The computer system works it out. They buy like hundreds at a time and then they go to the company that that sell it up and then they just sell them. Fucking massive profit. Yeah. It's these people. We talked about the driving lesson thing, didn't we, the other week? No. So, little side note. What what they're doing basically is people are using bots to buy up driving. They get driving tests get issued once a week on a Monday morning, early hours. All right. And basically these come, because it's not illegal to buy multiple bulks of driving tests. What these bots are doing is they're setting up bots to buy all the tests in that area or whatever area. And then they're selling it through WhatsApp groups at a profit. Now these bots can be designed to do anything in terms of tickets. So if, if you know, they're going to set these bots up everywhere on a hundred different servers or whatever they're going to do. And these tickets will just sell out. Mm. And they'll just sell them for fucking thousands. I think that's what's going to happen. I Honestly, I wouldn't even mind having the cheap seats right far back. To say that you were there. Yeah. You know, you were there. I mean, I was looking at a Sunday. I think the Sunday is probably going to be the better day to go out of any. Depends where you're going. I'm looking at Wembley. Oh, Wembley, yeah. 90,000, 90, yeah. I'm looking at Wembley. I mean, it's going to be carnage. My only scare is, is, you know, look at what happened with the England match at Wembley. Not the rush and the crushing. Yeah, they stampeded it. Mm. 
Like, if you remember way back when, the Stone Roses played at Spike Island. Yeah, oh God, I can't remember, 87, maybe? No, don't remember that. Right, right. Stone, Stone Roses played at Spike Island, and they were the same. They reached capacity, and people were just running at it, running at the gates. Wow. I don't, I don't want it to be that kind of scenario, because I'd fucking hate to be in some... Likes. But then I've seen a lot of hate about it. I've seen a lot of people saying, I'm not going, I'm a diehard fan, but I ain't doing it. People saying they'll split up before the concerts even happen. <laughs> I've heard that. Yeah, it's like they're going to have a row before and it's not going to happen. But well, ticket, these people ticket. these people that are just fucking miserable, oh, they've been moaning for years to Oasis to get back together. They're finally doing it. For however long. If, yeah, yeah. if it's just for this tour next year, then, you know, so be it. I imagine they'll bring they'll make an album beforehand. I reckon. Yeah. Uh, they've both been praising each other. Noel's been praising Liam for his sellout concerts that he's doing and his music, and obviously mm-hmm. Liam's doing the same for Noel for his more dignified uh, music musical taste that he has compared with Liam. But what's what's with the hate? I don't understand it. It's like these people on Facebook, or I don't give a shit, they mark themselves safe, don't they? Marked safe from ha- being happy Oasis are back or something. And yeah, it's yeah. like, really? It's, there'll be one with Homer soon, Homer soon Homer. going, ooh, look at me, I've got an Oasis ticket. Guaranteed, the little Homer, ooh, that they come out in COVID, do you remember? Ooh, about yeah. a vaccine. <laughs> ooh, got a swimming pool. I, yeah. I think the fact, <laughs> Saturday, there will be a lot of statuses of people saying, I got tickets, yeah. I didn't get tickets, who's selling tickets? Yeah, I I've seen all re- I've seen already, apparently there's a few websites going around saying competitions to win tickets. I'm like, these tickets aren't even on sale yet, so how can you win tickets? What they'll do, In they'll fact, get them from like Heart, Capital, Radio 1, they will, do, they will get some tickets and they'll do competitions for you to win as well. I reckon. I tell you what, let's call let's call let's call this podcast today's episode. Let's call win tickets to see Oasis. Yeah. Win- <laughs> this, episode, this, e- this episode is called win tickets to see Oasis because I'm telling you now, the amount of people that will be ripping people off to get. I yeah. mean, people are going to be sh- people are going to be fucking shooting people for these tickets. <laughs> definitely, definitely, maybe they will. Yeah. Definitely, maybe. Do you like that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, there's, there's, a, there's a shit ton of shit jokes going around. But there, there's loads of people outside on my wonder world just waiting for the, the phone lines to open. <laughs> they've, said, <laughs> they've said they're not looking at playing that song. I don't know. I've not really heard nothing. I've just, I just know. I, I wouldn't be miffed. If, I wouldn't be miffed if they didn't play Wonderwall. Would I fuck? Well, some people are saying that they don't want them to play a gig with just their new material because obviously a lot of people don't know it depending on if an album comes out but now will if they bring an album out they're obviously going to have some new hits no no yeah they will do but if it's a reunion tour it is going to go you know and they're going to kick off with a banger for sure the the fact that that first gig wherever that is i don't know which if it's cardiff or manchester or wherever it'll be electric (laughs) <laughs> yeah it will be mate yeah but just don't worry you can stand by me and watch if you want yeah <laughs> uh that's fucking pun island today yeah that first that first song that comes out first gig back that first song the, be, music, the music plays that's gonna be amazing absolutely be good incredible if it was morning glory because do you remember the sound at the start where like the yeah, yeah, yeah. They've got like the chopper <laughs> sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then it kicks that, in to the guitar, that, yeah. In a stadium would be mental. No, I, I was like 16, 17, growing up with Oasis. I used to sit in the far bedroom where, with my Amiga or Commodore 64. And I was playing my games and I'd have... My mum and dad would go out shopping or wherever they weren't out. I'd have my CD player, my little portable one, put Oasis on. And I'd sit there playing on like sensible soccer or whatever it was, and I remember playing for hours just Oasis, Oasis, const- constantly album, it's... change the album, put a new CD in. That's all I did. Oh mate, 
for, for two, was, uh, maybe, maybe nearly three years I did that. It's funny how it passed down through a huge... I know the, a lot of anger that people are showing now is basically saying that they're going to lose out. People that fucking love the band are going to lose out on tickets to people that are going to go and be like, oh, I know this one. <laughs> you know? Oh, I know yeah. this one. Yeah. They're saying that under thirties shouldn't be allowed to go. I agree. Pardon and me. Not because, and not because I'm mid thirties, but I agree. Because it, I don't know. Like it, it was late for me as a gen. It was, a, it was late for me years as a ago. Gen- so, but for me growing up, yeah, because their last one was two thousand and nine. Was their last? Because that's when they had the big bust up in uh, in France, didn't they? After yeah, Nebworth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, full... yeah, two, 2009, yeah, the last time they played. Mm. Yeah. So, oh, mate. Between Just, that I, and the Stone Roses. I love, I love, Between Oasis I love and the Stone Roses. But yeah. You were going to say you're not what? Never really liked the Stone Roses, but they had some good oh. songs. But for me, it wasn't my sort of... I, I had a, a Metallica phase, and then I had. Oh yeah, don't get me wrong. I had a, I had a rave, rave phase, Dreamscape, never had a rave you know, Hel- Helter Skelter, and then Oasis, <laughs> and then it stayed no, Oasis is, really. Mine's so. mine's purely been. Oh, fuck me, rock and roll, rock, reggae, anything really. Yeah. Soul. I love. I, lo- I do. Don't get me wrong. I love the whole scene. However, the whole mod scene for me is a fucking cringe fest. Everyone's gonna get new haircuts. The Liam whole Gallagher no, no. haircuts. There's <laughs> a see difference, them. though. There's a difference between you know that because they don't dress mod. They don't dress like mods, you oh. know. But the whole mod thing with the sideburns down here and they love the short, the short front and the pointy top. <laughs> Like, yeah. And especially, and I get people, you know, there's new people trying to recreate that look now, and they're trying to dress like that and, you know, keep that era alive. But fucking hell, man. Oasis are back. There's a few, there's a few TikToks that I've seen, and there's, a, there's especially one of them, there's some bloke, and he's sat there, and it, it comes up on his computer screen, Oasis is back, and it, he gets, like, a haircut, it goes in his cupboard, yeah, gets... Pulls out his Adidas trainers, his Stone Island jacket, and the sunglasses, and he puts a, a vinyl of one of the albums on the wall, and he starts praying to it. Does the coat up, puts sunglasses on, and he goes into, oh. he goes up to his missus in the kitchen and sticks two fingers up at her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then he goes into the kitchen, and the living room, and goes, yeah, starts singing along. It's fucking brilliant. <laughs> oh God. I will, honestly, I'll be fucking mad. I'll be made up if I get tickets, and I am going to really try. I've got so the way that I've done it is obviously I've made sure my Ticketmaster has got my correct card details. I've, mm. I've gone on to gigs and tours, made sure my card details are correct. I've got three different tabs open: laptop, iPad, and my phone, and they will all go. And I'll be sat. In that, I'll, I'll set an alarm to get myself in some form of queue about five o'clock on Saturday morning yeah. and then it's, see it's, what happens. It, it's nine o'clock, isn't it, in England? Eight o'clock nine in o'clock. Ireland. But so there's a queue. There'll be a queue. And I'm also on a pre-sale. Yeah. So there was a pre-sale thing that came out for yesterday for tickets to come out on Friday night. Pre-sale tickets. Now, what you have to do is you have to answer a bunch of questions through the Oasis website. There's like one oh. of them, like, who was the drummer? Who was the initial drummer? Uh, before they changed them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. If I get tickets, great. If I don't, I'll, I'll be I'll be pissed. But it is what it is. You, you're going up against maybe millions and millions of people for these tickets. Millions of people. Fiat 500 fucking dickheads. Just, you know what I mean? TikTok banker mum and, <laughs> bank and, and fucking dad. I seen a TikTok yeah. yesterday that was. Everyone keeps saying that eighteen-year-olds will be at this gig. Like, who do, who do eighteen-year-olds get their money off? Their forty-five-year-old dad. Who who do you think's getting tickets first? The dad, <laughs> like, like. Yeah. And I was like, so true, man. Oh, I've yeah. got to go. I said yeah. to I said to my missus that um, 
I said, will you come? She's like, no. I said, it's Oasis. Nope, I won't come. Oh, okay. like, fine. I was like, mate, let's go. I said, I'm getting, I'm going to get two tickets. And it's fucking Oasis, man. It's Oasis. Like, 100% I'm there. <laughs> apparently speculations have said that Wembley tickets are looking to be around between £80 to sort of a couple of hundred the more closer you get. I don't care if I'm right at the fucking back. Yeah. Like, if you're there, you're there. That's you know that's I mean? that's normal. Coldplay tickets are like 120 quid. Maroon 5 tickets, when they tour England, is like 200 quid anyway. So that's a, that's about average. I mean, it is fucking ridiculous, but... You know. They were saying about the Taylor Swift thing about saying um, there's like a meme, and then she was like, "I sold out this many, this many, uh, this many seats or whatever." And there's like a picture of Oasis going, "Ah, oh, that's cute. Watch what we can do." <laughs> they're yeah. rumored to around. They're rumored between to make rounds between sixty and eighty million from this oh, tour. You, oh yeah, they're not stupid. They know what they're doing, and they will play whatever they. They won't be told what to play. They'll play whatever they want to play. And li- listen to this, yeah. I heard this. I don't. Know, I don't know if it's factually correct, but from the moment the first single come out, from the time they split up, yeah, is exactly the same time as when they split up to when they announced. Well, yesterday, twenty seventh, announced they were getting back together for the new tours. Isn't that weird? That's it's to the day apparently, or to the month anyway. Years and month is exactly the same. I wonder what the conversation was. I wonder what it because they've been daring each other for years to say, "Listen, get in touch." We'll do because yeah, Noel's always Noel, saying that to Liam, and he's Noel's like, "Go on, Noel, you know yeah. what to do." Noel said, Noel said years ago. He said, "Listen, if someone said, if someone says we can make a hundred million, I'll do it. I'm telling you now, I'll do it." He said it on uh, Jonathan Ross. Yeah. He said, I'll do it. So, and they're going to close to make that, I reckon. Oh, yeah, because they're, they're 100% they're going to bring an album out anyway, beforehand. They're going to have sales, or singles. They're going to have probably vinyls as well will come out now. That's limited edition vinyls, limited albums, you know, the specials. Clothing. The clothing, like, merch, tour Adidas merch. Will get, Adidas will get straight back on them. They'll be all Oasis over their trainers. Case. There'll be trainers. <laughs> oh, there's already trainers, man. There's limited edition speedles you can get. Oh, is that what God. they are? Yeah. Is that what I've they're called? I've got... i tell you what, I love original Adidas. However, I will say... Like the gazelles. Speedles, gazelles, any of them, they're uncomfortable as shit. I've never had <laughs> any. They look they look very narrow for my feet, so I never bought any, but they look nice. Oh, and the Samba is Samba as well. The blue ones. Sambas, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sambas are nice. Samba. My brother wears yeah. Sambas. He wears nothing but Sambas. But I tell you now, trying to break those shoes in is fucking they don't horrendous. Look, they don't look comfy, but they look nice. Just, you've got to do this for ages. You know when you get your foot and just sort of wiggle it either side for ages? You've got to get some sort of form of shape to them. But they are um, <laughs> just a classic shoe, man. Hmm. It'll be good, though. It'll be good to see them. It's nice to have a bit of positivity, though, isn't it? Yeah, they they also said that they'll be, this would not be on TV, so you'll never see it and, unless you you're there. It. But everyone's going to have their phones anyway, so we'll just watch oh, it on God, TikTok. Yeah. Every TikTok will be live streaming it. For yeah, that's sure. fine. Then... I, I'll have a watch, <laughs> you know, it, if I'm not there. It'll be one of them things, though. If you could, if you could fucking be there, that's like a moment in time, isn't it? Yeah, it's the reunion but... tour better than the the final tour originally i don't know they were angry as fuck on that last tour not mm-hmm. even just for the one gig the whole tour they were like they were bitter they had had enough of each other bearing in mind i think what people didn't realize is that they'd been the biggest band in the world for so long mm. and they were together all the time everything was gig interviews hotels planes trains you know the lot like they were together all the time they they stopped having a life because they were touring for fucking what the one of their tours lasted for like a year and a half 
Well, I, I listened to that McGee bloke who signed them, who was their manager yeah, yeah. or whatever. He said that originally they would, like the beginning times, and uh, they would they would go everywhere on a tour bus all all together. But the final years, they would all go in their own cars. Even the drummers, the bass players, everything. They would not go together. So that's when they knew that it was sort of on the decline because they didn't enjoy being together. Obviously, maybe it's just too much time together. You get pissed off. I think it, I think it did them good. I think it did them good to split. I think it gave them a chance to go, actually, do you know what? We can succeed on our own. Yeah. We can try our own things. And they both tried. You They've know, both been both successful. Yeah. Massively successful in what they well, did. Look, look, you know what, look I mean? what happened. It's just a bit similar to Take That. They were fucking biggest band in the world. They split up. They all did their own thing. Some worked, some didn't. And now they come back and had massive, massive arena tours for years mm-hmm. on end. And then they're, they're just as popular as ever again, you know. So it, it can work if if you give it maybe enough time. If they have enough time apart to remember yeah. the, the good days. And then you think, okay, then time's passed. We're not out like angry with each other anymore. Yeah, I mean, I think... they they hadn't spoken for what for like nearly eleven years that they've yeah. not, and I mean they've got they you know the sad thing is that they've both got kids that grew up that they've never met, you know, yeah. little things like that. Like it must it must take its toll. I mean, obviously they've got their mum as well, and their mum's in the middle of them. They, you know, mm. they go and see their mum separately, and it must be yeah. fucking must be hard. I bet but they then, have different you know, boxes at Man City as well. <laughs> next to each other but crazy it, isn't it it's kind of it's but, but yeah positive start to this podcast and obviously oh, a was... positive start to this week as well buzzing oh, wait, get ticket. if you get if you get tickets people you know let us know let us know so let we can us... rob you yeah yeah <laughs> tell us your address <laughs> honestly I'll swap no not really for... I'll swap them for my house. <laughs> like, it can have, seen you can people, have his car. <laughs> I've seen people basically, I've seen people on TikTok saying, listen, I'm selling everything on Vinted. I'm selling by like, Xboxes and TVs and all sorts of stuff just to get rid, just to get tickets. Yeah. But it was the same with the England final, you know? Oh, the Euro final. However, yeah. However, this is Oasis. This to me, this is bigger than football for me. It's it's bigger than England for me, anyway. Definitely, hundred percent. It is honestly. I I mean, just the mannerism. I just know that the amount of ungrateful knobheads that will get tickets. Oh yeah, and game. they'll they'll come out and say, "Oh, this is shit." That was there. Yeah, that was shit. Yeah. Any like, you know, or you know, they go and they go. They didn't even play Wonderwall. I'll be like, you fucking melt. You fucking cheese fucking melt. I don't think Wonder Wars even in my top five, to be fair. Probably not even ten. There's many no. album songs that are on these various albums they've released that are better than the popular I ones think as well. The problem is is with the popular songs is that Overkill, overplay. I, yeah, they're just they're just, you know, fucking between Wonderwall and Sally man, like she can it's wait. Kind of, she can <laughs> fucking wait. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Just, it'll be good. It'll be good to get tickets. So anyway, people, if you're wondering yeah. why, this episode is called Win Tickets to See Oasis. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you because, listen to this, you might be able to win one if you know someone who has some. <laughs> oh, mate, I told you, there's competitions already. Yeah. And people are they're sold out. I'm like, hold on a second. People are entering competitions, even these people, and I'm talking like do you know like the Facebook competitions or people have got mm. a website that host you can win a car and ten grand, that sort of shit. Yeah, yeah. There's basically like win four VIP tickets. No, they haven't even said there's VIP tickets yet. Like It's crazy, man. I don't even think there will be. Everything will be standard, I think. Everything will be standard i personally i wouldn't want to i wouldn't want i'd prefer to be in a stand for sure than standing maybe that's me being old but in a seat yeah yeah in the seat in the yeah. stands not, yeah not because in the stand that's standing technically not on the pitch you wouldn't be no, no, no. 
the pitch I mean, would just be a fucking yeah. chaos. Imagine, imagine if you get at the front though. Ah, oh, that'd be fucking epic. And it's all pitch, it's, pitch, it's pitch black, and then suddenly the music starts, the chopper starts going. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fuck. And then like you got these oh. the smoke coming out, and the strobe lights flashing, and then fucking Liam comes out, and then Noel's there. Two Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, and his tambourine. Oh, they haven't even said that, they haven't even said they're having support acts here or anything. They haven't said anything. Imagine getting that gig as well. That'd be epic, man. Just be Bez. Bez will come out for Happy Mondays. <laughs> you yeah. know, there's so many places. There's so many people that can have support them that would be amazing to have support them. But I don't know. I don't know if they will have support acts. They give away no. so little. Yeah, I think they're they just exclusive for them. I think. Yeah, this Maybe. is uh, it's going to be a big one. But anyway, really good news. Start of the week. It made front page headlines. It did on so, all the newspapers, all the red, the red tops, all the scum, and all that. So, yeah, it's good. It. Happy, 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 happy. I want tickets. Mickey's coffin. It's gonna be sick in the thought of getting tickets. Uh, yeah. A little tickle. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be in that queue. I tell you, I will be in the queue. Sure. I might, I might join it as well. Then I might get try and get some. It's definitely worth a shot to try and join a queue. Just to, I mean, even even if you know you go right, I'm just going to get the cheapest ones they've got because everyone will be going for standing room to start off with. Mm. So my playing it safe will be I don't care what shit, tickets I get. Shit seat, shit seat. Yeah, yeah. that will be you can't, my tour. You can't you can't see them half the time anyway. They're always that big on the. No matter where you are in the stadium, unless you're near the front. So you have to watch the big screen, don't you? <laughs> It's a big difference of being there, isn't it? That's the good thing. It's the atmosphere that you'll you'll feel. Yeah. It definitely will be electric. It will be electric, for sure. <laughs> oh, should have thought of these before we fucking come on here. Just get some more puns in. <laughs> so, what, what's the story, mate? Yeah. I'll let you know in the morning. <laughs> Sleep is glory. glory. <laughs> <laughs> How have you uh, been otherwise? How have you been? You've been busy. Uh, I've been a busy boy. Yeah. I've been in four fucking mm. countries. <laughs> no, three countries. But yeah. So three good. Countries. All and over. Not, and not in them. <laughs> and not. The old knots. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's been, been good. Obviously, the last good. episode, we finished off with me driving to Wales for 10 hours. Yes. Uh, it, was more than, it was more than 10 hours. It was 14 in the end. You looked. I was watching your um, your story, and you were just oh uh, yeah, Insta. The, yeah. The, the fact that your the fact that your lad had two naps on the way back. Fucking liberty, man! I get up at five a.m. and leave at half five to get to Wales. I got to him at two minutes past eleven. That's with two stops mm. as well, and having food on the way. Um, were you? F- I was all right. Were you- I did. He was all right. When I got there, yeah, the, I stopped mm. at the gate and I said, obviously, I'm here to pick my son up. Then I had to have checks and that. And then they brought him out. Um, he seemed really happy. He said he really enjoyed his week. So that's good. There's a big fuck off tank outside as well on the road. Yeah, you saw the scene. Yeah. Yeah, this is the middle of nowhere, obviously. But it was, it was easy to get to. So that was lucky. And then basically. 15 20 minutes in there the turnaround and we had to get out and then they headed back again it's like oh my god but i gotta say the uh the roads were kind to me good i, I left about i think t- quarter past quarter past 11 to head back uh we stopped about half two to get petrol because i seen petrol at our price uh, mm. like one thirty one thirty seven at the time and in Wales it had been like one forty five and then I saw this old one and I thought I'm coming back past this road so we pulled over, filled up again. I'd used about half a tank but I probably wasn't gonna make it back. Yeah. Obviously the time delay and the sitting in traffic. And 
Yeah, so I filled up. Use their toilet. Fucking, I couldn't even lock the door. It was one of them old ones. Oh, and then they got stuck in oh, there as well. Fuck that. And it's like, Bleh. you know, a little white shed in the corner of the fucking forecourt. As a, you know, and it's like, wow. Yeah, I can smell it. I can smell yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, you could. And then, um, yeah, we stopped for some food. We had two and a half hours to go. And then just before Oxford, just before you get on the M40, it was five mile bit of road and i was on there for 45 minutes just to join the m40 and then after that i was nothing on the m40 straight through straight through brackley straight through toaster six fields and home fucking brilliant so i only really had that one issue for that little part of of road just before the m40 coming back fading on the way back um a little bit i was a bit a lot I needed stretching because sitting down for that long is a bit difficult. And my left hip was hurting and my leg left leg was going a bit numb. <laughs> it's like oh, shit. I need that Especially leg. <laughs> towards getting home you just like, fuck it, I'll ride it up. I'll just keep it in fifth and I'll ride it all the way through. <laughs> yeah. Twenty mile an hour. <laughs> I'm not changing it. <laughs> I hate that. Towards the end of a journey when you just can't be like, right. Do you know it's mine for me is when after you've been on the motorway for a couple of hours straight, do you know when you enter the slip to get off and it's like, oh shit, I've got to remember I need to change gear now. Yeah, and you've got to move your other foot on the brake and it's like, what? Yeah, it, fe- it feels weird, doesn't it? <laughs> it's not a nice feeling, is it? Because you're like, no. oh. But it, it was good. I, it's good spending time with with my son, obviously. Asleep. Just don't, yes, fucking sleep. It's fine. I kept taking fucking Snapchats of him, so it was all right. But, yeah, it was good. Good. It was. Oh, Niall, clean your coffee that's machine. That's my dishwasher. Tell me it's finished. Oh, look at him. <laughs> dishwasher. Dishwasher. <laughs> I did wash up earlier. I washed up. I did the pans. Oh, how's your hands? Are they all right? Hands okay? Are they, are they, they do dishes, yeah? Oh, mate, this wax Mild on, green. wax Very off. Liquid. Oh. <laughs> How's but, yeah. the, um, how was the trip to the Haunted Museum? I didn't go to the Haunted Museum, no. I went to the Majestic Cinema, which Ooh. used to be the Haunted Museum. Yeah, that was interesting. That was, um. Uh, a blast from the past out with uh, Ali and Sadie from Hauntex TV. That was, uh, out that was good. Out with friends. Out with friends, yes. Breaking and entering. Not really. The door was open. Literally was open. And then oh. and then it fucking I wasn't. Thought this was like, I thought this was like, you, oh, this is just a urban exploring, let's call it. It was an explore, yeah. A bit of urbex slash Herbex. ghost ghost hunting yeah so obviously we we thought that there was a, a particular metal shutter that needed lifting a little bit but no lock uh but when we got there do you know what the fucking thing is yeah we parked on the main road just just about 20 yards from it and do you know what they put right outside the door you know where you want to go there it's dark you don't want people you know, seeing what you're doing. First of all, opposite the door, there's a bus stop with three people sat in it. Yeah? They're fucking sitting there waiting for the bus. This is... Bus? Bus. About... Bus. 10 o'clock at night, yeah? So you can't make it up. And what they put right outside the fucking door, five feet from the main road, yeah? A fucking traffic light. Like... The road work traffic lights. So it's like, oh my you, god, you, you had have, a, you, a limited there. Opportun- you had a limited yeah. opportunity. Yeah, you had you had to wait for it to go green, wait for the cars to go for, that were queuing outside because for them to come back up towards us was about fifty yards down the road. <laughs> and it's like quick. <laughs> so, but anyway, the shutter was open about four foot. So it's a case of you know like just laying on your belly and crawling in Ooh. so it wasn't it, we weren't breaking and entering the door was open the shutter was open 
We just walked no, in. Squ no squatters in there. No, like no. It, it's fucking trashed, though. But not trashed like you'd think. It's like things are broken and that, but they're not stripped of the walls with an electrics, the copper and all that stuff. You know, that's that's still there. So I was very, very well, surprised. The no homeless or anything or fucking no tables, no we checked or... we need we checked all the three floors um and we, we went down to the basement and do you know what we found we found the wall down there had been smashed in and we found a growing room for cannabis now apparently this had been seized back in april this year or last year one of the uh, museums shut <laughs> yeah, it, well, it'd been shut about three, four years, the museum, because it's had two more since then. But there were big pots, yeah, full of soil and little stalks for the trunk of the cannabis plant. There's about yeah. 50, 50 in this room. There was old dried leaves on the floor. There was the lights, the light system still hanging from the ceiling. But there's no oh, bulbs, God. obviously. The police took the bulbs. And there's old bags of fertilizer, everything in there. And fans, there's fans everywhere. All the pipes. And do you know what? We found 15 more rooms like that under there. I never realised how big that fucking building was. It was just endless more rooms. Full of, full of plants? Yeah, obviously the plants weren't there, but where yeah, they would have yeah, grown yeah. in the pots, yeah? All the lights. And there was people, there was beds in there, mattresses down there. There was all the times on the like the whiteboards that they'd brought in there. Times of when they have to check the fans, check the temperatures of all the plants. It's a proper fucking system, you know. Sure. And they they had food in there. There was still food in there. So, so I'm thinking maybe this year it was there in April. But yeah, it it was it's very eye opening. So oh my god, it's a very horrible business of what I've seen and the footage of. The kind of people they make stay there you know it's kind of yeah uh, yeah they weren't going home no oh no no the, the people that the people that they make live in these factories because at the end of the day it's a 24-hour day job you know what i mean you've got, pr got protected yeah 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 and it's fuck me imagine that haunted museum with a crop inside yeah Jesus. but another, another thing that happened we were down in the basement a bit later on, maybe after about three hours, and we heard a massive metal bang. And we're thinking, that better not be the fucking shutter. Because I had thoughts beforehand, knowing that the shutter has to, you know, in theory, has to come up to get in, yeah? And I was thinking, what, yes. if, that, what if it comes down when we're in there and we can't get out? Like, we're fucked. Hello, police. We're, we're, we're illegally in this room, this building. Can you come and let us out, please? You know, imagine that. Oh. And then it all came to fucking life when that metal shutter came down. And it's like, oh, my God. So I went up there. And, yeah, the shutter was down. And it's like, oh, my God. So we all went up to, to, the, to the door. And I lift, tried to lift it up. And yeah, it was movable. And I'm like, wow. So then we thought maybe someone had come in and pulled the shutter down behind them. Yeah. So yeah, obviously yeah. it was already open, put it down so that no one thinks, oh, there's someone in there. So then we had to check the whole building again, underground, overground, all that. And no, there was no one in there. And then we were thinking, why would someone just walk past? And it's not easy to shut, you know? So it must have took some effort to, to shut that. Shut it, yeah. It's like, why would they do could that? Have unless, could unless have been a couple it, of coppers, anything. We, and then we started, later on in the evening, we started hearing like, not not rattles or bangs, but similar on the doors. like the fire, All the fire escapes, there must have been about 10 that we'd seen, were all boarded up from the outside. And it uh, sounded okay. like people were trying to get in. And I was then going through my head that, Maybe there's a new lot of criminals that are scoping the place out to maybe start up again. And I'm yeah. thinking, fuck, we're stuck in here. Is this a good situation to be in? <laughs> you know, it's like, oh. But yeah, I was. To be fair, I was. I was happy when we managed to get out. I was really happy when we we hit the Relief air outside. Sort of yeah, thing, yeah, because although I know I can get the shuttle would go up and we could get out. 
until we actually do that, it was a bit scary. I'm not going to lie. It is, oh, I mean, for me, uh, yeah, for me, that is a no-go. Just because of, again, the way that you would feel just being in that situation of being like, the shutter wouldn't lift, you know, or you've got to, My- now you've got to try and kick a fire escape open. Because surely they shouldn't really board everything up because if anyone so is trapped can- in there. So you can't get in, isn't it? That's why. I know, but still, if people are going to get in, they're going to get in, but. You know, but then again, if we could get out the fire escape, from what I remember, the back area around the building is actually in a gated area further up. Right. So they have to okay. open gates for your car to drive in to park behind the the museum when we went there. Right. And then okay. they'd shut the gates, these big metal gates. So there's not. You'd have to do some climbing, I think, over the, you know. So yeah, again, get, we could get outside, but could you get out into the street? So that's another thing. <laughs> so fucking hell. Uh, but you it, got, brought, you, it brought back lots of memories. I was happy. I bet. I bet it did. Yeah. Lots of lots of. That's a good time, anger, Mickey. Mickey. Don't look back in anger. Good times in there. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say? Obviously, I know you've been to a lot of risky locations. A lot of security guards that you've been chased by and mm. have you done have you done any sewer systems or i know you've done tunnels like i know you've done tunnel systems you've done london and you've done drake clothes yeah. have you you've done any is there anywhere that you are thinking right this is where i want to explore now bar obviously place in london scum top my tongue on the house not East Drive. The other uh, one. Enfield. 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 Yeah, I'd love to go Enfield. Every fucker's doing East Drive now. Everybody. Everyone's always done people... East Drive. It's... I've, I've seen about four people doing setting up premieres for yeah. East Drive. Surely yeah. that place now is just not active. Uh, it's one of the most disappointing places I've been to. The four times I've been there. It's, it's, it's Poltergeist, yeah? On average, lasts about six months for the activity. This happened in 69, 70, yeah? Why do people still think that 50 years later that poltergeist is popping back with his monk uniform on and having a bash? Just standing you know? around, having a bash. Yeah. yeah. It's that surely, th- though, the, the people that own it are just cashing in as much as possible. Obviously. Is it is it booked up? Like, is it... As far as I know, a couple of years ago, it was booked up for like up until now, every single day of the year. So you're talking, I first went there 2000 and I don't know, 15, 16, something like that. Maybe a yeah. bit earlier. When, whenever Most Haunted Last was on Really TV, they did the Halloween Live with the rope and the knives in the pockets, all that shit. Yeah. We, went, we went the week after the, for the first time. And basically, since then, it's been booked out. And how much is it for a group? Do you remember? Between 300 and 400, depending on how many people are there and what day of the week you go. They've literally per- bought that house 10 times over. Yeah. House is like an ex council house, right? It's probably worth about what? 140 grand? 160? It's, it, it's in Pontefract, so probably not that much. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's probably. Just say 110. Fucking hell, they've, they've, they've rinsed it, haven't they? There's also, obviously, the bloke who owns it, Bill, from what I hear, I've never met him, but I might be meeting him in October. He uh, he bought the house to do the film. Yeah, he bought the okay. house so, so that he owns the rights to any motion picture. So yeah. the film was when the lights went out. Very good yes, film, yeah, yeah. Ba- based yeah, on yeah. this on the, the true stories of what happened to the Pritchard family. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I suppose Most Haunted helped raise the level of that location and people just carried on. But then you've been to locations that have cost you nothing. Yeah. Sorry about the traffic, people. Sorry about the traffic, it's it- fucking hot. <laughs> I'm sweating now. 
yeah so you've yes. been to like you said some some locations that cost you nothing and you've had more, much better activity oh yeah normally because they're not overhyped they're not as investigated as, as much so obviously you're not getting the human trafficking all the time if, if someone's coming to your house every day saying come on doing this do the same thing asking the same questions you'd be like fuck off i'm watching emma i do <laughs> you know? my missus comes in every day and asks me what's for dinner is the washing done <laughs> she asks me all those <laughs> questions every day same answers i'm, I'm doing it I'm there's working no activity it. <laughs> yeah there's no activity <laughs> fucking hell but yeah um, the, the, some of the the least investigated ones are the best yeah look at your hellfire experience for example and Oh, I fucking love that place. I mean, it is open to the public, so I imagine a lot of people do go there, but not as much because you have to trek through like 40 minutes of forest up a hill like this. And it's just think that within the, what is it, 20, 20 years, 21 years you've been doing this now? 16. 20, 16 years. Yeah. So have you, obviously you've seen definitely seen a change in the way that people investigate, the way social media love investigations now. Mm. You know, TikTok is massive for the community. I imagine it's massive for your community, purely based on, obviously, people love scary shit. It depends how, like you, how you look at TikTok for ghost hunting, etc. You have people that do, are paranormal people that do YouTube, they put their investigations on YouTube and they put clips and stuff on TikTok. Now, you also have YouTubers or TikTokers that do the paranormal. So there's a difference. They're the ones that seem to, they come and go quite often. They don't stay around for long. They don't get the views that maybe they want in the end. They don't get the, the responses from the public or from you know the investigations they're doing because they don't really know much and i think it's very easy if you're a big influencer let's say to mm -hmm. then go and do par do paranormal get all the views get all the likes yes fucking hell the ghosts have got your car <laughs> it's not it's not mine it's fine and uh yeah, they get bored after a year or so, then they fuck off, and then someone else comes I've along. Seen, I've seen a TikTok do it. I've seen... Um, what's his name? I'm going to name names. I give a shit say in my world. That Dan Sprague. You've yeah. heard of him? Yeah. Uh, so, ghost Trip Investigations. So he started doing it, and he started doing it the back up, off the back of his TikToks. Yeah, he's with Adam Oakley, yeah. So, yeah. from popularity through just doing fucking silly videos with his missus and whatever, to going, actually, do you know what? I'm going to try and take a massive bunch of my followers to come and watch this and get views for that. Do you do know you what? Think? That's they've they go America every month, investigating these massive locations. They have fan meetups. They they are massive, absolutely massive. You know, however they've got there. They're doing what you, a, lo a lot of people can't do, including myself, because I haven't got the, the following. And the finance, the, the financial the finance. backing of, no. to be like, right, because well, you could, do, you could, you know, if you had the financial backing, you could go to fucking yeah. Austria, fucking suicide forest, fucking, you yeah, know. All over the place. All over the place, yeah, you could do it. Mm. I mean, you know, you're still going to go to the country now, so I still want you to do that. I still think that would be the best episode that you would ever do if you went there. <laughs> you yeah. might not even get that much activity, but to say the fact that you have took your channel all the way there would be fucking mm. mental. Yeah. Shame the, the new owner's mental. Uh, I bet they are. Oh, sellouts again. Are they she... sellouts or are they, are they block outs? Are they blocking people from... No. This woman called Jacqueline, she bought it from Corey and his missus. Uh, they obviously bought it and they were the first pe people to open it up to the public which is really good they sold it to Jacqueline last year I think end of last year and since then she has sort of gone a bit mental and she's accusing Jason Hawes from Ghost Hunters like the original OG of fucking Ghost Hunter of trying to kill 
her, assassinate her, because his daughter used to work there. And lo- there's seven, eight of them that all left. And basically, she's accusing everybody of lying. She sacked her, one of her staff the other week, because a 1600th ghost told her to. A ghost from the 1600s said, that man, that worker is stealing from you. So she sacked him. She owes him nine grand. Now, the price I booked to go to stay there with Corey and his missus back in 2021, and it was about £80 each for me and Mark. So it's about $120, something like that, each. She is charging thousands now to book and stay there for the night. There's different, different hours that you can book depending on how much you want to spend. You're only allowed, if there's a group of YouTubers going, you have to pay another tax of like another thousand pound or dollars to film. And if there's lots of YouTubers, only two two channels are allowed to film. The third channel or fourth channel, whatever, they're not allowed to upload the footage. And once your video is ready, you have to send it to her for approval before you can put it out. Yeah, yeah, she's she's making it, and everyone all over social media is like boycott the country and house. So you know all the staff Good are leaving. For them. She's gone fucking mental. So they're hoping that someone else is going to buy it very soon. But apparently, all the social media for the country and house has gone down this week. So who knows what's happening? She, but she's a proper fucking nut job. She calls the police and everybody. It's fucking crazy. Very sure. strange. <laughs> she'll just bury she'll just bury herself in fucking death and yeah how Mental, is she mate. doing that how is she deciding who can film and who can you know it's her house what they want yeah but are they signing disclaimers yeah 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 you gotta like, sign oh wow yeah it's all paperwork it's America you, you know you get all that shit everywhere you gotta sign the waivers for all this you can't do this if you do this you gotta pay that and yes, have they mental? Obviously, I've seen loads of stuff about that house in terms of clips and footage and all sorts of shit. Have they said? Because it's 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 on a burial ground, isn't it? It's built yes. on a burial ground. Yeah, supposedly. Yeah, supposedly built on a burial ground. Or the, it's not even the it's the area, isn't it? It's not the house itself. No, it's the farmland. Yeah, it's the land, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So. On a scale, how active can these places carry on being? I know they're just restless souls or whatever, but well, they're, surely they're, it's... they're supposed to be spirits of like bodies of soldiers found in the walls on the on the premises uh, in the garden area. So there's soldiers there from a from a battle that was around. I don't know when it was. That Bathsheba, who was supposed to take over in the film Conjuring, she lived in the next village. And she'd never ever, as far as I know, been to the Conjuring House. So that's a fake story. So she's not in there. A relevant story, wasn't it? But then obviously, if you look at the Warrens footage, it doesn't, the real stuff doesn't really relate to the film anyway, really. No. In terms of what they were trying to portray. Obviously, the film sold what it did, but the story itself. There is, there is Andrea Perrin who's still around. She loves doing podcasts and conferences and para meets and all them sort of things. She obviously she's written loads of books. Um, I believe her mum passed. The original mum that was supposedly attacked back in the day. She she passed. I'd say within a year or this. I'm sure I read something about the last six months or so. But anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so she's Andrea is still there doing all the shows and everything, um, let, keeping the story going. So good. You know. my, so obviously, my main question for all this anyway was <laughs> obviously with the day and age of where your world's at now. Do you think it's got better with more people doing it? Like, do you think it brings more attention to what you do, or do you feel like it's just got worse because everybody's fucking doing it? I think the core group that seems to know everybody is is good it's good and then you get the outsiders that you know like the newbies that oh we can do that better than you and for whatever reason sometimes they are i think they're the ones that if they're not going to stick at it 
you know don't be here for leave two it, years and fuck it. off don't yeah, do it yeah, at yeah. all you know because it means they're only doing it for views or channels or money views and money yeah, yeah yeah don't do it for that reason do it because you love it or you've got an interest in it and just stick with that interest so it, because now it is all about one how good your content is two how good your editing is in terms of putting all the footage together and just basically who's following you to get the views or yeah. who wants to buy you know your tape your products yeah and at that point it's like that's that's a lot of stuff that people don't see the investigation is one part of what you do yeah all the stuff behind it is way more time than the investigation you know you could just go out there and fucking write, fight, fine. I've got a thousand people on my TikTok. I'm going to go live because I'm allowed to. And mm. then more people could potentially join. I mean, how many people have you got on? Have you got enough to go live on any of your TikToks? Yeah, I've got two and a half thousand on my TikTok. You only need a thousand to go live. But I never I go live. I never go live on TikTok. I think you should. I think what you should do as an experiment is you should put little clips out, little snippets of where you're going to go, what you're going to do, who's going to be with you. And you should do a test just to see, you know, it doesn't have to be a massive investigation, but you should do it just to see what kind of sort of backing you get from that to see if it does anything. Well, I'm, I'm out again this weekend in uh, South Oxfordshire. So I might try it there in an old prison. Never done a prison. First time I've ever done there a prison. Go. So I might stick my camera on in a room. <laughs> I think I think it'd be good. I think it'd be good to, even if you just was like, listen, you did it for an hour, right? Or you did it for half an hour and mm. you just basically just see what kind of views you could get from it. Because I think that you'd be quite pleasantly surprised that you could probably get quite a lot in terms of views for what you're doing. Just to see yeah. what it does. As an experiment, uh, yeah, to see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Mate, Oasis. Don't look back in anger, mate. Anger. <laughs> I am gonna so obviously next week's show will be Did not be, get tickets. <laughs> did I get tickets? Did I not? If I'm I I sorry but to say I will not be trying to buy tickets off anybody. I won't do no. that. I will buy I, It's dangerous, I don't, don't do it people. Yeah. I don't think they're going to be doing anything else after this. I'm not sure they will. I'm not sure. I mean, I, if they survive this, because I know that, so Ticketmaster are offering insurance on your tickets. <laughs> if they cancel. Yeah. So we'll see. But yes, welcome back, Oasis. And this week's episode is called... Who wants to win tickets to see Oasis? <laughs> Let's see what that does for our views, motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Peace out. Yeah, welcome back now. Deuces. Thanks for watching, motherfuckers. Thanks for watching, <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> Woo!